Hearthstone patch 25.2.2 launching today, Thursday, January 26th, uh, has officially posted the patch notes, including all of the details as to exactly what is changing with all of the cards that they did previously tease or kind of announce that they would be changing. So for standard, we have the Wild Pod Null for Rogue is no longer going to count uh, cards that you've added to your hand from another class. It will only count each non-rogue class card you've added to your hand. So this actually is a huge, huge change. Uh, this means that ultimately Maestra, using that Maestra to disguise your class, uh, will no longer take effect because the rogue cards you're drawing from your deck will not be counted for the discount of the null. So very significant change here. And I think this probably might <laughs> mean that null is really not going to be seen anymore. Uh, going to be very interesting. This is a completely different change than what they've done in the past with changing the mana cost or the attack. So going to definitely uh, see a huge drop in Wild Pod Null, I would expect. Uh, and the second rogue card here is Sinstone Graveyard being uh, nerfed. Now, uh, before it was a stealthed ghost that you would summon, but now it is just a ghost. No longer has stealth, so you'll be able to make trades into it from the other side of the board or use spells to target it, uh, which is incredibly impactful as well. The fact that this doesn't have stealth also means that perhaps mages will be able to use their uh, location to freeze to target that stealth and freeze this body. Uh, again, targeted spells or trading can also be used, but uh, just removing that stealth will give players a chance to combat that. Now, if a rogue is playing this and still is able to get, you know, an 8-8, 10-10, 11-11 ten, ten, eleven, eleven on the board, and you as the opponent can't do anything, you know, with that, it's still going to be the same result. But removing that stealth will give a lot more classes the opportunity to answer or stall that minion from actually hitting face. So these do seem like huge changes to rogue. I'm really, really interested um, to see where this goes, but I think there's still going to be some rogue decks that still do pretty well. Um, but at least maybe we can start answering their turns. Then we have for Demon Hunter, uh, the quest, this quest card here, the first part of the quest is I'm getting a huge nerf. Uh, before all you had to do was draw four cards in one turn to get the first part of that quest completed reduce the cost of those cards you had drawn by one. Now they are increasing it to you have to draw six cards in one turn. It's not impossible to do for sure. There is quite a bit of draw uh, that has been included in this deck that really makes it work, but it's just gonna be a little bit more tricky and it does slow the deck down um, because you're gonna have to make sure that as the Demon Hunter, you have enough resources with your card draw and things already in hand to be able to draw six in one turn. It does count the card that you draw at the beginning of the turn, but you're gonna have to build up those resources to be able to draw enough cards in one turn. And then that means that you're not getting the discount on these first set of cards either until slightly later. So it gives opponents a, a little bit more, maybe a turn or two more a time to be able to kind of combat whatever the demon hunter is going to be doing or, or put together their own uh, conditions. And then Sinful Brand being used uh, a lot lately, especially in this quest demon hunter deck. And this is going up one mana. So was one and now going to cost two. Shock Spitter being changed. We've already seen this nerfed before, but Shock Spitter uh, was a two mana two two. They bumped it up to a three mana two two and now changing even more going to four mana and a three three body. Again, just continuing to slow that down. 
I still think it might be used, but it's definitely not going to be as powerful or closing out games on turn six. Uh, then we have Glacial Advance. Glacial Advance uh, basically going uh, to create a little bit less follow up is really what they're aiming for here. Still dealing damage, but previously would cause your next spell to cost two less. Uh, but now your next spell is only going to cost a one less, so still a little bit of a discount. Um, but again, kind of just slowing things down potentially by one more turn instead of being able to maybe play this on turn uh, three and play something for free. It's now going to have to be played on turn four and that same card costing one. And then for Astalor the neutral, incredibly interesting here. They are changing all three phases. So the first part of the card... Uh, they are going to actually just increase the mana thirst. I mentioned when I was kind of theorizing how they could change this, if they would change the mana cost of any of them, if they would change the damage, or if they would change mana thirst. So it looks like for the first part, they are just changing that mana thirst to five. So you can't deal that two damage with the first part until you have five mana. The second part, also getting bumped up by one mana thirst, so you won't get that, uh, you won't get that armor gain until you have eight mana when you play this. And then the third phase is uh, going to be decreased in the amount of damage it deals just by a little bit. Uh, so instead of eight, it's going to deal seven. And then if you play it for a mana thirst 10, it's going to deal double. So it would only deal 14 instead of 16 like it previously did. Uh, so a little bit of a decrease there, but I'm kind of interested that they actually changed the mana thirst of uh, the first two. I kind of was thinking that maybe they would just increase the cost of the first step or maybe the first and second step. Um, definitely was suspecting the damage would get decreased a little bit, but pretty interesting change there. Now for the buffs, they're making quite a bit of changes for the buffs. So we'll go through these fairly quickly here. And some of them are, I think, going to be kind of similar. Uh, but the first one is the Battlefield Necromancer. They are just increasing the health for the taunt minion that gets summoned. And same thing with the Bone Guard Commander, just making those Risen Footman taunts uh, a little bit more health heavy so definitely i think going to actually make a huge difference there with those uh, risen footmen unholy frenzy getting decreased by one mana so it's going to be a little bit easier to play um interestingly same thing with wither i still don't really think that this is going to get used uh the problem with this and honestly kind of the unholy frenzy is that there's just not really great uses for them at least right now uh wither would be a great card if it were just your friendly minions but it specifically has to be undead and also stealing one attack and one health from uh you know from a minion you really need several at minimum undeads for it to be significant in most cases so i don't think that this is really going to make much of an impact with these cards. Um, the Priest cards, we have Bone Collar uh, getting increased by one health here. Pretty, pretty okay, I guess, for a taunt there, but kind of interesting because with that Death Rattle effect, you kind of want the Death Rattle, so increasing the health seems a little bit odd to me, but it is a taunt, so generally they have higher health. Uh, the Haunting Nightmare, uh, they are increasing the attack of both the Haunting Nightmare itself and the soldier that you get from the card that you play. Um, I did kind of suspect that there would be a stat increase uh, for the Haunting Nightmare itself. Wasn't really suspecting that they would change anything with the soldier, but making the both four threes makes sense. Uh, might be enough to make some, you know, aggressive deck slightly better here. 
as well as the uh, High Cultist Basilev changing uh, as well, going to only cost four instead of five. The kind of odd thing here is that it does um, only impact, you know, undead that had died after your last turn. So giving you a little bit of uh, more flexibility there to play it. But we'll see if this is enough to kind of make this archetype uh, more prevalent. For Warlock, though, we have Darkondrathir dropping down to seven mana instead of eight. This certainly did feel incredibly slow at that eight mana. Uh, so pretty happy to see that getting dropped, as well as the Infantry Reanimator going down one mana as well. Um, both of these did feel slightly slow, slightly clunky uh, in this kind of undead death rattle um, type of warlock deck. So kind of interested to see if this can kind of uh, keep up to speed with some of the other decks with having both of those decreased by one mana. Continuing with that uh, decrease in mana, we also have the Vengeful Walloper. I really don't think this one is gonna see play. <laughs> at least for a while here. Uh, Energy Shaper also going down one mana and then becoming a 3-4 instead of 3-5. Seems pretty on par with other changes. Again, I really still don't think that uh, this is going to be enough to see play. And Vast Wisdom also getting a decrease in mana. I just, I really don't think that these uh, for Mage and for the Demon Hunter are going to be enough to bring those kind of archetypes up enough to really uh, make a difference in the meta, but they are changing to be able to try to do them a little bit earlier. And then Time Warden for kind of that Dragon Paladin getting decreased by one mana and also falling into that uh, three, four stat line instead of three, five, which again, makes, makes pretty good sense. Uh, for me, then having this as a three mana, three, five plus this effect would be incredibly good. Uh, but having this playable at turn three, I think is amazing. And I do think that this one will help a dragon paladin a little bit more than some of those other uh, cards, because I do think that paladin and like dragon paladin specifically kind of were on the verge of being played and, and kind of competing in the meta whereas Mage and an Outcast Demon Hunter just really have not seen play at all. I think even really in testing. And then of course, getting into Warrior, we have to talk about Warrior. Uh, the Asvidan Grand Shield going up to a 3-4 instead of a 3-3, three, three. Uh, but it's also gaining Taunt, which is kind of interesting. Um, still casts a copy of your last spell, so not anything really changing there, but just having a 3-4 taunt body is pretty interesting, and because of this having taunt, it now has some synergies with other cards, uh, including another one that we're going to talk about in a minute, so very interesting there. I don't think we've ever seen them kind of add a keyword like this, so that is that is not a change I was expecting. Uh, disruptive Spellbreaker here as well. The uh, old stats were 4 or 5. It is now going to a 4 6 stat line. Okay. I'm, I'm not really um, incredibly interested in that one myself. I think to set this to 4 mana could have been pretty interesting. Um, or even just making it a 5 mana 5 5. But making it a 5 mana 4 6, sure. And here we go. This is the uh, taunt related card I was mentioning. Last stand uh, was four mana. You could have a taunt minion get drawn and then double its stats. Now, this is a huge, huge change here. Very drastic change, which I think is actually pretty necessary uh, for how much they really need to actually change some of these warrior cards to bring it up in play and win rate. They are decreasing the mana all the way to one mana to draw that taunt minion, but they've added a mana thirst effect to it. So mana thirst of seven to double its stats. I'm not thrilled on that one. 
I think I would rather have seen a Mana Thirst 5 or maybe 6 if they were going to go this route personally. Uh, because Mana Thirst 7 still feels pretty costly. And I would have rather just have paid the 4 to draw my Taunt Minion and double the stats. So that I could play that higher statted minion on potentially turn 5 or turn 6. Uh, so having to wait till turn 7 for that seems a little slow to me currently but really interested to see if this card sees more play here and then of course we get to this legendary it was previously nerfed and it's been quite a while they are bringing it back though before it had the taunt and the death rattle uh, to bring this you know pirates into your hand and they would cost one less uh now it has taunt and then of course this death rattle still uh, this is the pirate ship itself N nothing is changing with uh, the colossal itself just the kind of appendage the colossal piece that comes with it is changing uh, so after that death rattle uh, you get to add nelly's pirate crew to your hand and they cost two less uh, so pretty interesting here um they aren't completely reverting the nerf the original version was you would put those minions in your hand and they would just straight up cost one mana not costing one less um costing two less i still think it's gonna be a little hit or miss uh you still have to draw or or discover some good pirates from this i think to actually be effective uh, as much as you want it to be but it still could see a little bit more play um, if warrior overall is going to be played people might be trying some pirates with this uh but i'm a little honestly i'm a little sad that uh just costing two less is what they went for i think i would have liked a bigger splash with this one looking at the uh living blade they're bringing this up a little bit they are changing the attack here instead of four attack it is going to be five attack uh this is kind of the change actually that i was looking for with this card i love the flavor of it i think everything else is fantastic but just changing the attack to help clear up some more things um seems pretty significant and that is it for the standard changes for this upcoming Hearthstone patch. What do you think? Let me know in those comments below or what are you gonna play? Do you think these warrior changes us like specifically five cards change for warrior? Do you think those are enough to actually bring warrior back into the meta? Let me know what you think. Thank you for checking this out and I'll see you in the next one.